Hey there, I'm Mike, and today we're looking at the web's most used JavaScript library, jQuery. It would be hard to overstate the impact jQuery had on web development after the open source JavaScript library was released more than 15 years ago. Even today, jQuery continues to live up to its developer's motto, write less, do more. jQuery is popular among professional developers, while others with little or no programming experience can use the library to add advanced functionality to their websites. But before we get too deep into jQuery, I want to let you know that there'll be links to more resources in the video's description below. And remember, subscribe and ring that bell to get notifications for future helpful content. Now, what is jQuery? jQuery UI is a popular collection of plugins designed to enhance user interfaces. It's seen as an official companion to the core jQuery library and adds a host of special effects and such widgets as date pickers, progress bars, sliders, spinners, and tabbed or collapsible panels. The battle of the browsers has waged since the beginning of the web, and developers have always been casualties. In 2006, when web developer John Resig unveiled jQuery, Microsoft's Internet Explorer browser was the undisputed market leader, a reversal of Netscape's advantage less than a decade earlier. At the time, Mozilla's new Firefox had a 10% market share, compared to Microsoft's 84%, and Apple Safari had just appeared on the scene. Google's Chrome, today's market leader, didn't exist. JavaScript programmers like Resig regularly struggled to write code that would run in all of the browsers. His new jQuery library was built to address the differences in the way JavaScript was implemented by those browsers and help developers write less code while accomplishing tasks like these. Manipulating the HTML elements in a web page. Dynamically modifying CSS. Responding to events like mouse clicks and key presses. Handling Ajax requests to update a page content without reloading. Following Resig's release of the library, other developers built applications on top of jQuery, often sharing the work as plugins to make new functionality available to everyone. It's important to know that jQuery is JavaScript. When you use jQuery, you are working with instances of JavaScript objects that reflect jQuery's naming conventions for methods and properties. Let's take a look at vanilla JavaScript and jQuery tackling the same task. Here's a snippet of HTML somewhere on a web page. Vanilla JavaScript code that can find the paragraph element with the ID target and then replace the text between the tags could look like this. JavaScript's getElementById method returns an object that includes the HTML and the text content of the paragraph with the target ID. The object is assigned to the constant reference content, then its text content property is changed to new text. JavaScript allows you to chain methods making the two previous examples possible with a single statement. Not surprisingly then, you can also chain jQuery actions. To change old text to new text using jQuery, you could do this. The dollar sign is a short alias for jQuery, and target selector is an example of a jQuery selector. In this case, the selector is looking for an HTML element with the ID of our target paragraph. The jQuery text method is chained to make new text the paragraph's content. Add jQuery to your website by linking the library's code from the site's pages. The jQuery library could be on your web server or a publicly accessible content delivery network. The official jQuery website can hook you up with the latest versions of the library. The jQuery library is available in minified JavaScript for fast loading in production or uncompressed for readability and debugging. You will write at least a little JavaScript to invoke jQuery and tackle tasks specific to your web application. In the HTML of your website's pages, you can link the jQuery library and the file containing your code like this. In this example, version 3.6.0 of jQuery and your site-specific code in a file called myscript.js are located in the JS directory on the website. The jQuery library is usually included in the head section of the web page. It's common for developers to place some links to JavaScript files, including code that relies on the jQuery library near the bottom of a page usually just before the closing of the body tag. You will always want any site-specific code that invokes jQuery to appear after the link to the library itself. The jQuery library will often download faster when delivered by a robust CDN. 
jQuery is so ubiquitous across the web that there is a good chance a visitor to your site will already have the library cached in their browser for multiple CDNs. We can modify the previously mentioned HTML snippet to make use of Cloudflare's JavaScript content delivery network like this. When writing your jQuery application, a best practice is to confirm that the web page has finished loading before your code begins to run. You can test this by using the ready method, which hands off your code when the document has loaded like this. That start for a jQuery application is so common that the library's developers have devised even briefer syntax. The foundation of most jQuery applications is the ability to traverse the structure of a web page as an object, the document object model, or DOM, and target various elements within the HTML. Selecting an element or a group of elements is the step before doing something with that element, like changing its appearance or updating nearby content. jQuery selectors target DOM properties in a variety of ways. The most common include by HTML element name, by CSS properties, by the relative position of an element within the DOM, by the value of the content in form fields, by the current state of an element. Here are some examples. You can combine jQuery selectors for more specific targeting. Here are some more examples. Now that you know how to select various elements within a web page, you can modify them using jQuery methods. As mentioned earlier, you can often chain these actions to get a lot done with little coding. Check out these examples. The kind of DOM manipulation just described would go unnoticed by web visitors if it all happened as soon as a page loaded. That's why your jQuery application can detect and respond to events like mouse clicks, mouse movement, keystrokes, and more to create a truly responsive experience. Responding to the click of a mouse or a tap on a touchscreen device is a common task for web applications. We've combined some jQuery and HTML in an example that also takes advantage of jQuery's built-in event object, which will contain useful information about our click event. The result is this. Knowing the mouse pointer's current location over a web page is useful in many responsive web applications. Here's an example of how jQuery can help. This example also shows how jQuery's CSS method can be used to set multiple CSS properties at once. Here's the result. A big part of jQuery's popularity is its ability to simplify the AJAX requests web applications can use to exchange data with servers without reloading pages. The library has many tools to manage AJAX requests for data in plain text, HTML, XML, and JSON formats. The jQuery approach is to offer shorthand options for the most common tasks. One of the simplest in the AJAX toolbox is the load method. A lot is happening there with just three lines of JavaScript and two HTML elements. The result would look something like this. Add jQuery UI plugins to your projects and you will have access to many special effects and widgets built on the core jQuery library. Here's an example using jQuery UI to add a pop-up calendar as a date picker within a web form. First, add the jQuery UI library and its supporting CSS to your web pages. In this example, we are linking to the libraries on Cloudflare's JavaScript CDN along with the core jQuery library. Next, add a form input field within your HTML and via JavaScript, attach jQuery UI's date picker method using a selector. Clicking in the input form field will now launch the date picker. The jQuery library comes bundled with WordPress and is a key component to many WordPress themes. Even if your current theme is not already using jQuery, you can take advantage of the registration of JavaScript dependencies within WordPress to get all of your jQuery code up and running. You'll do this by editing the functions.php file that is a part of your theme. A theme update can overwrite that file, so it's a good practice to keep your changes safe by first creating a child theme and editing the functions.php file there. At the very least, create a manual WordPress backup before you proceed. 
You can use an FTP or SFTP client to transfer the functions.php file between your desktop and the web server to edit it. WordPress administrators can also modify functions.php within the CMS. Just go to the dashboard, select appearance, and then theme file editor. Click theme functions in the left-hand menu. The contents of your functions.php file will depend on the currently active theme. Here in this example are functions of the 2021 theme. You can add your own jQuery script to your site's configuration using the WordPress utility function WPNQ script. Here's the template for that function. And here's what it all means. Handle, the user-friendly name linked to the script. The jQuery core library is already registered in WordPress with the handle jQuery. Source, the path and file name or URL pointing to the JavaScript source code. Depths, the handles of any other JavaScript sources this script requires to function properly. Ver, any version number you have assigned to your JavaScript source code. In footer, if set to true, the script will be added near the bottom of the page. Otherwise, scripts will be placed in the head block. After a script is queued, it's added to a page with the add action function. See it all in action by adding a block like this at the bottom of your functions.php file. Here, the new jQuery script is given the handle my script, and the WordPress utility function get template directory URI helps build a URL for the JavaScript file within the themes directories. An array of other handles tells WordPress that my script depends on jQuery core jQuery UI core, and the jQuery UI date picker plugin. Finally, we've assigned the script version number 1.0 and NASA to be placed near the bottom of the page. We know that jQuery can be served up from several content delivery networks. We also know that out of the box, WordPress wants to load jQuery and many jQuery plugins from the file system of the local web server. You can change that behavior by eliminating the configuration information registered with the existing jQuery handle and rewriting it. To do that, add a block of code in functions.php beginning with the WP deregister script function. The jQuery handle has been assigned to the jQuery library on the Cloudflare CDN, and it remains a dependency for the local MyScript. You can use the same approach to pull other jQuery components like jQuery UI from a CDN. Looking for a quality local development solution? With DevKinsta and a single click, you can design, develop, and deploy new projects from your local machine. Plus, it's 100% free to use, even if you aren't a Kinsta customer. Download it today at kinsta.com slash devkinsta. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more tutorials, explainers, and helpful content like this.